In a previous video, I taught on Romans chapter 3, verse 25. Let me read it to you out of the New International Version. It says, God presented him, Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice. And the verse goes on. So God presented Jesus as a sacrifice of atonement. Now I pointed out in the previous video that there are versions of the Bible, the King James being one, the English Standard Version being another, which instead of saying sacrifice of atonement, read propitiation. And I believe that's a mistranslation, and I talked about the nature of God. <laughs> now, I also said most people don't see a problem here, <laughs> usually because they don't know what propitiation means. But a propitiation is a sacrifice that appeases anger. And I think it's very important for you to, and I to understand that God is not an angry God. He's not up in heaven just sitting around being angry at mankind. He loves mankind. He cares for us. He gave his son for us. Now, I got some emails back about that and, and people giving verses and showing, John, you're wrong about God being angry. And they sent me verses about God being angry. Look, I know that God gets angry. I know that. But, what, but it's important if you and I are going to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, that we have a fundamental opinion about God. And that fundamental opinion should be not that God is an angry God, that he's sit, sitting up in heaven with a big chip on his shoulder, that he's just mad at us because we haven't obeyed. And so he's stomping around up there being mad. And I'm just going to be mad because people have disobeyed in the way he is, is angry. And he holds that anger. That's not our God. He loves us. Now, does, is God going to show wrath? Yes, he will. But it's important for us to understand God's wrath is a function of his righteousness. When, when you and I sin, then that sin has a consequence. And the consequence is bringing the wrath of God down upon ourselves. Now, God could not be just or righteous if he just said, oh, sin, no problem. You know, the people that are good, they're fine. The people that are sinning, they're fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have consequences to either one. That wouldn't be fair. God has to be righteous, which means that he has to deal with sin. And by the way, if you're a parent, you're kind of in the same position. You know, if your child is behaving and doing well, then, you know, you should honor them for that and bless them for that. But if your child is, is misbehaving and especially doing evil, then there better be some kind of consequence or you're going to raise a, a very hurtful child, someone who will hurt others. You understand as a parent, you're not disciplining the child because you've got a chip on your shoulder or your fundamental nature is to be angry with them. You're disciplining them for their own good. And what God did, God will pour out his wrath on people who will not, uh, will not come to him for forgiveness. They're just going to do their own thing and sin against him. Yes, there will be wrath. But that's not his fundamental nature. Now, again, let's see some things from Scripture. Do I know that God gets angry? <laughs> sure I do. I mean, here's, I mean, there's a lot of these verses, so let's just read a couple, okay? Deuteronomy 31, 16, uh, the Lord said to Moses, so the Lord is, is talking to Moses about Israel, and he says, they will forsake me and break the covenant I made with them. On that day, I will become angry with them. Oh yeah, Deuteronomy 31, 16, and 17, God says on that day, on the day they do something sinful like, like break my covenant, I will become angry with them. Or uh, 1 Kings 11, 9, when Solomon sinned against God, it says the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart turned away from the Lord. And again, God's anger is based on what he expected, expects of us. Remember, Ephesians 2.10 says that God created us to do good works. God created us with the free will and the potential to do good in his sight, to be godly. Now we know that's going to cost something because we live in an evil world. You're not going to be godly and not, um, and, and just going to be easy street. It's challenging to be godly. But when we're godly and obey God, then God blesses us. When we disobey God, then 
because of his righteousness, there's discipline or chastisement, and sometimes that waits until the judgment. But it's important to understand that any wrath or anger that God pours out is based on his righteousness, not on the fact that he's just up in heaven mad. Now, there's a couple things we should pay attention to in light of this. One thing is Jesus Christ himself. Remember that Christ said in John chapter 14, I believe it's verse 9, that if you've seen me, said Jesus Christ, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Okay, great. Let's take a look at Jesus. What was Jesus' fundamental nature? Did Jesus Christ get angry? First of all, did he get angry? Oh, yeah, he got angry. Mark chapter 3, verse 5, when the religious leaders in the synagogue didn't want a man to be healed just because it was a Sabbath day. Said, Mark 3, 5 says, Jesus looked around on them in anger, deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. Yeah, the, the, the religious leaders were stubborn and, and hurtful, didn't even want a man to be healed, and Jesus Christ got angry about it. But does that mean Jesus Christ's fundamental nature was anger? Is Jesus Christ walking around angry until we offer a propitiation, some kind of sacrifice, and he goes, oh, well, because you did that, I won't be angry anymore? No, Jesus Christ was, was the most loving, most kind, most forgiving of all people. And if we look, it, here's, a, here's something interesting. Perhaps you remember the verse <laughs> that says, this is Ephesians 4.31, get rid of, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Here's God telling us how to be. And he says, get rid of bitterness, rage, and anger. And he doesn't say, you know, wait until somebody comes and apologizes, and then don't be angry. Oh, no. Oh, no. If you know anything about the New Testament, you know that we're supposed to forgive even if the person hasn't asked us for forgiveness. And so God just says, get rid of it. <laughs> I mean, that's as simple as it is. <laughs> just get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger. The next verse, Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind and compassionate. And then what's interesting is the very next verse, which is Ephesians 5.1 says, be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children. So if, if, if we are supposed to get rid of anger, and rage and bitterness, if we're supposed to be kind and compassionate and forgiving, and we're supposed to be imitators of God, well, that tells you how God is. <laughs> because if, if God says, well, I'm up here and I'm angry until somebody does something that appeases my wrath, okay, if that's, if that's what we think about God, and we're, according to Ephesians 5.1, going to be imitators of God, then that's exactly the way we should be. Somebody does something uh, that, that upsets you, by golly, I'm just going to stay mad until they do something to appease me. God comes down and says, what are you doing? Forgive, even as God, for Christ's sake, forgave you. See, God lives in the same reality that he expects us to live, to live in. If you and I are going to truly understand God, then we have to know that, that he is in heaven just, he, so wanting, so wanting us to accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Do you think God wants to discipline us? you think God wants to pour out his wrath in any way whatsoever? Absolutely not. Romans 5 says that when mankind was still hostile to God, he gave his son. He so wants to just bring people in, love them, bless them, protect them, help them. And only when people are hard-hearted and continue to sin against God does he have to pour out wrath as a, as a matter of justice so that there can be justice on earth. Let's have a good vision of our Heavenly Father. He is a loving God, not a wrathful God.